Hey everyone, today's video is a little experiment that I wanted to do. Use Lumion and V-Ray to do similar tasks and I thought of a quick physical model render to get a volumetric study so that should give us plenty of interesting insights to talk about. And by the way, uh, this past month I've been working on some commissioned images uh, and I challenged myself to use Lumion as my main render to see how I could use it professionally. Here's a sneak peek of that, but I'm planning to get a full video on them out uh, or some Photoshop breakdowns to continue the series that we have here on the channel. But that's for another video, today we're gonna compare these two programs in the same workflow to see what we can take out of it. And now, no more talking, let's jump into the video. All right, so first things first, I gotta say that the goal here is not to decide which one is better because uh, they're both different engines and one is a real-time renderer and the other one is a typical CPU renderer. So that's not a fair comparison, but we are here to understand the process in each one and talk about that. And the project that we have here is Quinta Monroy from Elemental from Alejandro Aravena. I think most of you already know this, but if not, I highly recommend checking it out. All right, so let's start with the Lumion and leave good old V-Ray for later. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a sped up process and highlight some information that I think it's important, okay? So I used the design showcase scenario for this one because it comes with an infinite plane already set up, plus some settings that can come in handy, and it's more focused to these sort of diagrammatic images. Um, not, not that I really recommend using the presets that they have, it's important to get to know each effect and learn how to tweak them to your liking. But as a general guide, I would say that if you're looking for a realistic result and if your computer can handle, uh, use all of the effects in the advanced tab. They, they each take care of a single important thing, but overall they all help out with lighting, uh, reflection, shadows, and a few other things. So usually I start by defining my scene. In my case here, I already set up uh, back in SketchUp since I wanted to match them up later. And instead of applying rendering settings to the model in Lumion, uh, they only happen inside each viewport, or scenes as they call it. And the idea of this experiment is to use the default materials that come with each software to see how quickly I could uh, get a final result without having to go after high quality PBR materials. And, I, and I've said this on other videos here on the channel when, when working with physical models, physical maquettes, uh, the, the trick is to enlarge the textures so that they look out of scale. And talking a bit about the process here, I found that using the Lumion Live Sync plugin allows me to be much more experimental with my model and then use Lumion as a renderer instead of a standalone type of software. But I guess regardless of the program you use, you gotta understand that it's after all just a tool and the less it creates friction in your workflow, the more you can focus on creating and visualizing, right? Well, at least that's how I think about it. Uh, now, the last Lumion update they fixed a lot of bad things that happened with Omni Lights. They didn't cast proper shadows and went through walls and stuff uh, back then. And apparently they fixed that, so well, I was eager to test it out. So with this experiment, I saw many disadvantages in Lumion, as I'm gonna talk about later. But a big win for this program is the, the ability to see in real time uh, how the effects and objects are affecting your model. Here, lights aren't as advanced in V-Ray, but they can certainly help you focus on the creative side instead of uh, getting too fixed on technicalities. Now, another tip for uh, realistic maquettes is to use an alternative source of light instead of the sun. I simply created another only light on the side uh, and made it very strong. I cranked the brightness all the way up. And now I wish I could have further options here, like more advanced options, but it kind of worked out in the end. And there's one thing about lighting in Lumion that I gotta say that uh, if, you're, if you're looking for a, a, a diagrammatic result or some, some volumetric study like this, this one that we're doing right now, uh, it's important to know that Lumen will always find a way to illuminate your scene, like no matter what. So if you want to isolate the model you ha and have that one source of light be the only one, uh, you might need to create this sort of box around it. Because I was seeing the night sky affect my model, even though like uh, I set the sun to like lowest brightness possible. So that's that's sort of a, a workaround that I had to do. So I think it's important for you to know. 
But the I think the biggest takeout from Lumen here is that you can get really fast previews and you can literally tweak every single slider to see what it does and find the best settings for your scene and your model. Uh, that doesn't really happen on V-Ray, although you get a similar result, a similar approach. I think I think that's the biggest takeaway from Lumion here. So working with lighting to create volumetric studies is pretty easy and straightforward. The process is much smoother here and enjoyable. But as I already mentioned a couple of times, some realistic settings aren't as good as V-Ray or other CPU renderers. At least for now, I guess. Uh, like they fixed the Omni Light that I showed you and they might fix other faults later down the road, but that's what we have now to work with. So when working with those commissioned images, I noticed that the reflections are good just where you actually place them uh, and you're limited to 10 straight surfaces. Uh, so things made out of glass don't really look uh, that good, but that's something that I'm gonna talk over when we talk about the, the commission images and the Photoshop breakdowns that, that are to come. But yeah, I think on Lumin, once you get the overall look you want, you can start playing with some more artistic effects like depth of field, for example, and it's all very intuitive and, and responsive. Well, I could go on and on here, but for now, since we're focusing on this process and these, this experiment, I think that's, that's more than enough. Let's jump into V-Ray and talk a little bit about that and then finish up with some insights at the end of the video. And then I can also show you the raw renders plus the finished products with Photoshop and some insights on that as well. Okay, so V-Ray, and right off the bat, I knew that I didn't want the V-Ray sun for my scene, so I turned it off and that was quite easy. And I added a dome light, which allowed me to place an interior HDRI image. You can find plenty of free ones over HDRI Haven. I'm gonna leave that in the links in the video description. And Lumion does have the HDRI option, as well, like lighting options with that, but you're stuck with the default ones and they are only real skies, which is sort of a bummer because you don't have uh, much creative freedom on that side. So here on V-Ray, I made the HDRI really light so that it just affected a little bit of the lighting on, on the model, but mainly the reflections. And then later I'm gonna add a sphere light to really light up my model as my, my main source of light. And same way as before, only materials that came with the render engine and here we've got a group dedicated to diagrammatic materials, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, now, I felt that the emissive material in Lumen was a bit easier to set up and affected the surroundings a bit more, but maybe that's just uh, some settings that I didn't get correct on V-Ray. So, uh, that was basically the, the two processes. I uh, already talked a little bit about both. So, that those are the, the two raw renders. Obviously, with all of your images, uh, usually they are not ready straight out of a render software. So you gotta jump into Photoshop. And this time I tried not to do much here. If this was to be delivered to someone else or placed in my portfolio or even for a competition, I would spend much more time doing post-production. Here, I just added a bit of water damage over the edges or some earth layers on the base side just to create some interest and then increased the exposure, adjusted the levels, contrast, all using the camera raw filter. And I gotta say that I'm very pleased with how the Lumen one turned out, but working with those commissioned images that I mentioned, uh, I felt the need of going one step further on the settings, like being a bit more advanced on that. And I felt that it was too focused on the ease of use. And in some ways it seemed that they were reducing the settings so that they didn't overcomplicate things there. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just my take on this, but I wish I could see more like advanced settings as I mentioned. Um, yeah, overall, like good results on both of them. Uh, I think V-Ray is my, my preferred way of doing it, at least for now. Again, not comparing both. I know that I said this many times and, and I kind of I kind of did compare both of them. But yeah, that, that's it. Little experiment. Uh, reflections are still better over CPU overall. Not that this example really shows anything related to that. And even though we get more responsiveness with lighting and lumen, the overall ambient light can be better fine-tuned in V-Ray. Yeah. So that's that that was something that was in my mind like these days, especially when working with those commissioned images that I mentioned. And I wanted to do this little experiment so that I could extend this conversation with you guys because uh, not not every time I got the answers to like to the things here. Sometimes I just wanna try out and see what I can take out of this and practice. And why not share with you guys, right? 
So I'm eager to know like what you guys prefer, like what's your take on this? Uh, even with less advanced advanced settings, uh, like are real-time renders gaining uh, ground over CPU renders or not? I don't know. <laughs> and obviously when I'm talking like real-time renders and I'm not talking only about Lumion, but Enscape, Twinmotion and others. And uh, I think that's basically it. I know that I owe you guys a proper Lumen tutorial and that is to come. I'm just waiting on the form to properly release the project and do the official launching of that so that I can share the, the final images with you, but that's to come. And and yeah, I'm not gonna do like a, a, like a full uh, Lumion tutorial because we got tons of that over YouTube already, like 101 Lumion but more on to how to incorporate Lumion as uh, in your visualization workflow and then use Photoshop in that. I think I think you guys would be more interested in that. And yeah, that's I think that's it. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to give this video a like. And if you made it to here and you're not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to do so to not miss out on future videos. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.